it is that time of the year. The new season is just around the corner and it's one of my favourite times of the year because we get to talk about all of the new football kits that are coming out. I love this time of the year. It's honestly great. New kit season is here. This is the first video of plenty that I'm going to be doing, reviewing all of the new shirts. And today we're starting with the Premier League home shirts. And off the bat, off the bat, I gotta say something. I've had a haircut and it's looking really short, isn't it? Like it's it's. A, don't say anything, please. Don't say anything. You probably wouldn't have. You probably wouldn't have. But now I've drew attention to it. What am I doing? <laughs> but anyway, I'm ranking all the Premier League home shirts. Let's jump into it. The tier list is go at the top for the best kits. Good just underneath that. We've got a mid in the middle. Makes sense. We've got a did you even try for those that just didn't even put any effort in. And I've got a die for all those bad ones. I love that kind of format. I run with it a lot. Let's jump straight into it, shall we? So I'm doing this alphabetically. So we'll start with Arsenal. Arsenal tends to have pretty good shirts year in, year out, don't they? Unfortunately for me as a Chelsea fan, they just do. Especially with Adidas. And this year it's no exception. This is a clean home shirt. They've got a cannon crest on the base. And this is the first time we've seen that on the home shirt since the 1989-90 season. We've seen it on a bunch of ways. But it's actually quite cool just to see it on the home shirt. I know the cannon logo is very... It's, an, it's very cool for Arsenal for them to use it. So it's really nice to see it on the home shirt. Other than that, it's the Adidas template. It's bits of blue. It's quite clean. This is a good shirt. This is a really good shirt. I don't think it's GOAT, but it's a really good one. I'll, I'll stick it in good. Up next, we've got Aston Villa, who are now with Adidas moving away from Castor after plenty of problems that they had. And Adidas have not disappointed here. The video itself was amazing. Have you seen my bread? But the shirt, of course, is pretty clean. Using a simple Adidas template. I think the colour's really nice with the stripes in there. The nice two-turn base. They've actually brought back like a different version of the old badge after having a different badge last season. It's a bit of a mess, the badge situation. But this one looks pretty pretty clean and overall the kit itself is nice there's also on the back a nice 150 crest to celebrate 150 years and overall yeah i can't complain about this kit if i was a villa fan i'd be buzzing to have adidas for one but for them to do this kit in general pretty nice the video was class i can't fault it again i don't think it's goat it's not got one defining feature that's going like taking it to that next level but it's very very good i'll stick it in good bournemouth don't have anything yet not f when i'm filming this video anyway uh, they brought out some really cool pre-season shirts with that old school badge and michael b jordan wearing them that was sick but as for the actual home shirt so when i filmed this video bournemouth's kit wasn't out but probably when i stopped recording it came out it felt like instantly it was out and it's pretty cool, actually. It's a bit of a, a classy look. It's inspired by the 1415 shirt that um, they wore when they got promoted. So it's got nice golden accents in it. It's actually pretty clean. I can't fault it. I'd probably put this one in good as well. It's between good and mid, but I feel like the gold and the fact it's got a little bit of mean in there, I'll throw that one in good. And another boring one, Brentford. They just carried their shirt over. And I say boring, that's probably mean, isn't it? Because more clubs probably should do this. That's what we used to do back in the day. And now it just feels a bit money grabbing that there's a new shirt all the time. Uh, I love it because I love football shirts, but there is that side to it. And so Bournemouth are kind of doing a cool thing here. <laughs> it's just disappointing that the shirt's shit. The home shirt is terrible. I hate the gradient in the stripes. The Hollywood Bets logo is terrible. It's kind of unfortunate, really. They're doing a good thing, but the shirt is bad. I'm going to put this in Did You Even Try? Because they didn't, technically. <laughs> it's a bit of a loophole, but I'll do that. Up next, we've got Brighton, who are with Nike, and this is a simple design. You can't really fault it too much. They've got the blue and white stripes, of course, but inside of the blue, there's a white pinstripe. It's kind of gradiented towards the top as well, so it's not that jarring. I think Brighton kits tend to be pretty clean. Like, they don't actually steer away from that blue and white stripe. You know, they don't go mad with the stripes. They don't do anything crazy. So, I can't fault it, but I, I just don't think it's anything special. I'll put this in mid. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, we're up to Chelsea now. My club, Chelsea, as I'm wearing this beautiful Chelsea shirt. And this is just bad. And you know how you know it's bad? The promo blurred out the shirts. The promo of selling these shirts had the shirt blurred out. That tells you everything you need to know about this football kit, man. I'm so angry with that. I'm really angry with that. Get, get out my screen. What are you doing? They've gone for like this burning smoke vibes. It's a kind of like new era, blur, burning blue. Just, I don't know. It's just jarring, isn't it? It's just really, really jarring. They tried something and I do appreciate that, that they tried something. But I just, it just did not land. I think for me, the badges, they've, they've fucked with the badges twice now, two seasons in a row. That hasn't landed. The, mix that with the smoky bass. I think the smoky bass, if it was toned down a little bit, it's very out there. Tone that down a little bit. You've got an okay kit here. But overall, 
it's just not fun at all. They had to get Hazard out. They rolled Hazard out to try and sell it. Oh, it's such a shame. And Nike have really, I don't know, they've done really bad things with Chelsea. I think they've, they've fumbled the bag a little bit. As a Chelsea fan, I'm begging for an Adidas return. I'm begging for an Umbo return. Imagine that. Come on. This is going and die. And yeah, it's a shame because I'd love to work with Chelsea and I'd love for them to send me the kits, but not this one. <laughs> Not this one. Right over to South London now, Crystal Palace, who are with Macron. And I think since going with Macron, they've pulled out beautiful kits. They've always gone out there with their designs anyway. And this one is the most out there, I'd say. This is probably the most out there kit they've had. So the blue and red stripes are using like this kind of paint pattern plus the eagle from their badge to create the stripes. It's so, so out there. And normally, this kind of thing for me is like pretty bad. I don't really like this sort of stuff. But for some reason, this just works. For some reason, this pops in a good way. Again, I don't know if it's GOAT. I just don't think I could put a kit like this in GOAT. Um, but they've tried something, it's landed, and it's out there, and it's funky, and they've done a good job. So yeah, I'm going to put this in good. Over to Everton now, who have gone from Hummel to Castor, and that's a little bit of a downgrade. We know Castor's problems with manufacturing. I always think their designs are pretty good. Like I've gone on record to say that a few times. Their designs always are strong. It's just the fact the way they make them is always weird. Like they're always damp or they've fallen apart or their shirts are upside down, the badges. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a downwards move, especially with how good Hummel are at the moment. But anyway, that being said, this kit isn't horrific. I don't think anyway, like the base has this nice like EFC de deconstructive print uh, from that original crest from 1920. So that's cool. The design itself is pretty classy. Just a nice little simple collar in there with those lines. So yeah, it's not that bad, is it? It's not that bad, I don't think. It's got a little bit of history in there. It's an okay design. I think if I'm looking at those ones in good, I'll put this in mid. But it's not bad. It's not terrible. It could have been way worse. Over to Fulham now and another Adidas kit. Adidas have really got the majority of kits this season. And this is another template. Um, you know, we saw it at the Euros a lot. We saw it at the Copa America. This new template kind of reconstructing that team guys template with the light, the curvy lines in it i actually don't hate it i think it looks really cool i think it's just a shame that it's being overused you know the fact that like so many clubs have this it makes it less cool than it actually is does that make sense i don't know but anyway this fulham shirt I, it's cool man it's cool we got a polo color i fucking love polo colors i'm gonna say that forever on this channel i think but i just really do actually though the next up i go on a little bit of a rant about fulham's collar not going all the way around And I think I was wrong about that. So I put it in mid originally, but the fact that the collar goes all around, it's definitely not mid. It deserves to be in good, so we'll stick it in good. Ipswich now, we are back in the Premier League. It's been a really long time since Ipswich have been there. The story's amazing how they've kept going up the ranks. Part of me just, you know, hopes that they do well this season. Uh, but we're talking about the kits, not the football. Uh, and it's cool. It's cool, man. There's a blue base. Pinstripes have returned for the first time since 2011. The badge has this big crest around it, which is very 90s, isn't it? It's very 90s. It's like, it feels like kind of like this a little bit like out there. Very Umbro, to be fair, in the 90s. And also, speaking of Umbro, they've got their like retro badge because they're celebrating their 100 years this year. So it's kind of ticking a lot of boxes for me, but there's something about it I just don't quite like. I think a part of it is that colour. The colour is chunky chunky and weird and when collars get too thick it just starts to fall flat doesn't it so yeah that's just not a vibe for me i think the sponsor's cool as well you know the tie with ed sheeran and his involvement with the club and stuff that's all cool so where should i put this one i'm gonna put it in mid as well i'm gonna put it in mid as well just because yeah the chunkiness of the color throws me off it'd probably be good otherwise leicester city up next another promoted club and this shirt for me it's easy this one this is very easy this is going and did you even try because it doesn't look like they did. They've got an Adidas template. The sponsor they've got this year is absolute garbage. And it's mental because last season they had probably one of the best kits in the championship. That the nice shiny like fox thing in the material. I feel like they basically took that kit, ripped out any sort of personality and gone with this most basic kit. It's a big shame. It's a big letdown for Leicester. You know, big season back in the Prem. And they've got this. I wouldn't be happy, but yeah. Did you even try it? I already set it up top, but yeah. Liverpool's new kit up next. This is... This is a lot. <laughs> this is 
a lot. It's actually retro inspired. It's inspired by the 1984 kit, uh, which they won the European Cup in Rome. So obviously a momentous occasion for Liverpool. So it's cool that they're harping back to it, you know, being an anniversary. They've kind of modernized that design. So they've took the pinstripes and altered them to have you never walk alone type in them. And then instead of the V-neck on the collar, they've gone with this flat line. And that's where it's jarring to me. I like the the base is cool. It looks a little bit meh, but the, the you know the never walk alone thing in there is cool. But that collar is terrible, terrible, just so bad. the The fact that it cuts off into a square isn't a vibe in itself. But they've gone really chunky, like that old school one is. But they've not V necked it, so it just it looks like it does look just so harsh that cut just doesn't transition into the kit very well it's gonna look jarring i think on the players on fans i think even you think about the kids kits and how big that collar is it's not gonna look good i can't get on board with this i, I can't it's just too much for me i'm gonna put this one in die man city up next and this is a pretty simple kit it's just got the blue base and the 0161 in the colors and into the sleeve 0161 manny on the map I, I don't know. It's a hard one to say this. I don't know what to say. I don't know what else to add other than that's what they've got on their kit. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's cool. I think, you know, the fact that they've used the 0161 is pretty cool. You know, uh, if I saw Birmingham City doing an 0121, that would be pretty cool. I think I'd be happy with it. So for the people of Manchester, I'm sure that's that's fire. But I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm a bit... I've got no words for this kit, if you couldn't tell. So I think that guess that puts it... In mid, I think, yeah, I think that's a fair place for this one. I mean, no spoilers for the next video, the away shirts video, but their away shirt is looking incredible. So they <laughs> they don't have to cry too much there. And then over to Manchester United, and I think I know a fair few Manchester United fans, and I think their voice, along with many other fans, is that it's a bit underwhelming, isn't it? This is the, the template. There's a gradient on the kit, which doesn't mean anything. It's just there. And it just starts to look a little bit underwhelming, this shirt. I think, obviously, again, no spoilers, but the away and third, they've got way more personality. And they've gone simple with their home shirt. And I guess there's something to say about that. But overall, for me, this just doesn't land. It doesn't look like there's any effort in it. And therefore, I'm going to put it in. Did you even try? And this is where I'm going to contradict myself. Because straight away, we're moving to Newcastle. And the same could be said for that. It's simple. It's nothing but a black and white striped kit with the Adidas template. But for some reason, this slaps. <laughs> Someone explain it to me. I can't make any sense of it. So you probably won't. I'm sorry. It probably annoys so many people. But for some reason, this just slaps. It, it basically is just the Juve kit as well this season, which I also think absolutely slaps so i don't know maybe just black and white kits have a bit more aura about them i hate the fact i just used the word aura that slipped in there didn't it didn't like that <laughs> but this kit is cool i think that you know newcastle is very happy to have adidas back after such a long time i think they are doing a lot of retro throwbacks in there this shirt it's just clean it's classic it's newcastle I'm going to put it in good. And Nottingham Forest up next, another Adidas kit. And this this kind of goes to show you what um, a, a United or someone else could have done with their kit. So they've got the Adidas template. It's the red base. It's all nice. But on the base, there's a star graphic. And that's supposed to represent the two European Cups that Nottingham Forest have won. Brilliant. Just adding that little bit of personality, a little bit of thought, a little bit of history into a football kit for me always elevates it one step up it just it's just the way it is for me this probably would have been mid um but it's gone straight up into good just purely because of that star graphic southampton up next so you know how everton went from hummel to castor and that's a big downgrade southampton have gone from hummel to puma and listen i i don't actually hate puma as much as most people do i think they have tried to do some cool shit recently but this is a downgrade this is so bad it's not even bad, it's just basic as anything. Last season, they had a really cool retro throwback kit with Hummel, with those stripes, with the half and half design. It was mint. They've gone to Puma, and Puma have gone, cool, all right, fuck all of that, fuck you. Here's just the basic kit ever. I want to top it all off. Here's a shit sponsor. Now, it's probably not Puma's fault, to be fair. Harsh of me to say that. But that sponsor as well, and this kit, the design, it's just nothing. It's meh. I would say, would well, did you even try? But with how bad that sponsor is, I'm going to put this in die. Didn't think I felt so passionately about that until I started speaking. Tottenham up next. And this this frustrates me a little bit because um, being a Chelsea fan and having Nike, they always pull out stinkers for us. And for some reason, I think they just don't for Tottenham. There's been some stinkers, don't get me wrong. But this 
this shirt's pretty clean. There's nothing embarrassing about it. It's very simple. They've added the blue or navy on the sleeves. The, the cuffs has a nice little three stripes or a few stripes on it to make it a little bit retro looking. Obviously, Tottenham fans hate their sponsor because it's red and that's, you know, Tottenham for you. They care about the little things like that. <laughs> but this is a clean kit. This is a clean kit. It frustrates me, but it is. I can't actually say too much about it. It's nothing crazy, but it's nothing bad. If Chelsea pulled something out of this out, I wouldn't moan. I'll put it in good. See, people can't call me biased because I've just put Tottenham and Arsenal in good. So, you can't say it. Over to West Ham now. This is a beauty. This is so, so nice. Another throwback on our hands, another celebration. This one is the 60th anniversary of their Cup Winners' Cup victory. So, this shirt kind of pretty much emulates that very, very closely. So, like a nice round neck. The sleeves have some nice kind of cuffs going on. Even the badge has been altered to look more like the retro one. They've got that 100th anniversary Umbro logo in there as well, just to make it look even more retro. So yeah, this is just a retro, classic, modernised. West Ham should be happy with this. I would be very, very happy with this. Again, I don't think it's GOAT, but it's definitely good. One thing I did almost miss about that West Ham kit, though, is also that QuickBooks logo. You know, you talk about a nice retro design, but then having Betway and QuickBooks and this QuickBooks being this massive circle on the sleeve, you're taking away quality there, and that's a shame. And finally, we've got Wolves, who are sponsored with Sudo. Now, who the fuck is Sudo? Do you know? Because I've got no fucking clue. I have no clue. I'm swearing a lot here, aren't I? But anyway, this kit, on the surface, it's very, very simple, isn't it? But when you look a little bit closer... It's got something cool going on. Embossed into the material of the shirt. You can see the wolves like outline of their logo, you know, the wolf face. You can see that in there. That's class. And mix that with some really nice simple accents into the colour and cuffs. You, you you're actually on to a bit of a winner here. My only criticism would be putting Sudo above the, the, the Wolves badge. If you're gonna have the Wolves badge central, you should centralise everything or nothing. That's just my opinion on things. So yeah. I can't hate this kit. I think I think it's mid. It's still mid, isn't it? There's something about it that looks a little cheap. Um, but yeah, it's, it's okay though. So yeah, that is it. That is the Premier League home shirts ranked not one go. And I think that is very telling because I normally sneak a one or two in there, but there just hasn't been this season. I think, unfortunately, the Premier League is lacking in football kits, I'd, I'd say. I think we are. I think just when you're looking at other leagues as well, like, oh, my God, I cannot wait to do my Serie A video. That Serie A video is going to be so fun to do because there's so many good kits in that league. It, I can't wait. But when you compare that to the Premier League, it just falls a bit flat. So, yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree with my tier list or not? You know, I'm sure people, if they disagree, they'll get in the comments. But please do. You know, that's what we do here. We talk about these kits. We tell our opinions. Get conversating down there. That's my favourite part. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for doing that. If you did like this video, make sure you like. Give us a subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, but it's new kit season. So you got to subscribe because I'm going to be bringing out as many videos as I can talking about these new kits. That's it though. I'll stop waffling now. I've been doing it for long enough. I'll see you next week.